Ezekiel 36. Now we've just been having a great time studying the Word of God, the love of God, the holiness of God, the judgment of God upon sin. And it's been hard lessons through Jeremiah and Ezekiel, but you got to learn how God feels about sin and people that do sin and do not repent. We are talking about current events of 2015 upon the nation of Israel, upon all the nations around her. Also thou, son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Now, can you imagine what kind of fruitcake is God? He calls out a man, yeah, I want you to go preach to a bunch of mountains. Not to the people. To the physical dirt, rocks, stone, sand, whatever a mountain's made of. I want you to go up to those mountains. I want you to preach a message to it. I've had times as, as man called to preach and teach the Bible. I've sat in my car and preached to no one. Preached to invisible people in the, in the seat. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy has said against you the mountain. Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Know the ancient high places. That's the places of worship of false gods. Now what's going on here, and you can take it 2015. Israel is going to be about to be removed out of the land and put into Babylon. And those that don't go to Babylon, they're going to, some are going to run down to Egypt. And those that don't run to Egypt and don't run to Babylon, run to Edom and all that, they're going to leave the land. And what the enemies of God around them are saying, ha ha, that's my land now. And let's say, for whatever reason, it's not going to happen, but I'm using this as an illustration. Let's say if next year, because this year is almost over, let's say 2016, whatever reason, God takes every Jew out of the land of Israel. You know, you would have a World War III, or the PLO, the Jordanians, the Roman Catholics, or the United Nations, or the Arabians, or the Middle Easterns, the Iraqians, the Iranians, and the Afghanistans, and the Turkish, and the African. You would have a World War III on to occupy that land called the land of Israel. You know it. You got missiles right now that are being fired into Israel. You got people right now who would love to have Israel dead and gone. You have on maps in Middle East classrooms, maps in public places where maps are in the Middle East, and maybe their GPSs and stuff like that, that doesn't even recognize the name of Israel on their maps. That's 2015. The enemies of God are wanting the Israelites to be moved out of the land. Therefore prophesy and say to these nations that want Israel gone so they can take over. Thus saith the Lord God, because they had made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side. Everyone is against Israel. Do you know how you know Israel is God's people? Do you know how you know there's a God in heaven? Do you know that there's a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? How do you explain a little group of people in this region called Israel being completely surrounded, except for the Mediterranean Sea, being outnumbered by their enemies and they still are there today? How do you explain that? Where is the Babylonians? They're gone. Where is the Sodomites? I mean, the people of Sodom. They're gone. And yet, here is this one people that everyone hates. Ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. Ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are in infamy, scorn or laughed at of the people. You know how many Jewish jokes there are? I think that infamy is a total loss of reputation, a public disgrace. I laughed and scorn. That's not the right one. I'm wrong on that. 
they want Israel gone, dead, maneuvered out of life, of existence. They make fun of them. They've been blamed. They've been cursed. They've been rejected. They've been hated. And God told them, guess what? All these people are doing this to you. Because I love you. And I love you above all nations. And they can have the whole world, but they can't have one little piece of land that I've given you. So they're upset. You know, it's coming up to Christmas. You know what's going to be the ruin of every child in America? That one gift they didn't get from Santa Claus. They're going to get everything their parents can buy. And that one gift that was on the top of their list, they didn't get, that's going to ruin their whole entire year. Aunt Jane's ugly sweater is going to ruin their decade. Mom giving me underwear for a present. Oh! And that's what Israel is like. The people did not get what they want. They did not get Israel. They did not get victory over Israel. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, to the hills, to the rivers, to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, to the cities that are forsaken, which become a prey and derision, and that scorn and laugh, to the residue of the heathen that are round about. You know when, when Nebuchadnezzar comes in and finally destroys Babylon? It was a laugh. It was a joy. It was headlines. It was good news. It was... Terrific news. It was a joke. It was put to the joke books. It was put in the headlines of all the world. No one mourned. No one helped. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God. Because they made fun of you. Because you lost your reputation among them. Because you became a public disgrace. Therefore, Thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy, and our God's a consuming fire, I have spoken against the residue of the heathen. Fire of the jealousy, God is jealous over his people. Against all Indomenia, that's Edom again which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart. Hey, it's ours! All right! The Jews are finally gone. Don't you think that the world hated England when they came up with this land is, is dedicated to Israel? Don't you think that made hatred? I mean, they had to come up with the Belfort Declaration for Jordan. In, in uh, India, I'm mean, India. England had to, had to give in. If England, I'll keep on saying India. If England had not given in, and had helped that Jew 100%, do you realize they still be the nation where the sun had never set on that empire? Had they helped that Jew all the way, Hitler would have been just a, a bucket. They wouldn't need America's help. They would have whipped Germany's butt. But England went with all the world, went against God's people. They cursed them, even a half curse. And they get a curse, and look where they are today. There will be great celebration when the Antichrist proclaims I have a bounty. I have a target. I have a reward for all the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The world will rejoice. It was a joy of all their heart with despiteful minds. They're fighting against each other now. Even if they did occupy that land, they'd be fighting with each other. To cast it out from a prey. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, saying unto the mountains, 
to the hills, to the rivers, to the valley. Great congregation. Thus saith the Lord God. You expect them to be converted? Oh, well, as a preacher, the Bible states, you know, I've got to get souls saved. People must be saved. What about Ezekiel preaching this message here? Does he expect the hills come up to the, to the altar call? There's no results here. And yet he's preaching a God-inspired giving message like God told him to do. And no one's going to come forward. No mountain's going to bow down. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and my fury. God can be jealous. Back in the law, there was a, there was a thing with, with, with the husband. If he got jealous of his wife, God gave a clause. You bring that woman forward. You know how many times it became a sin for that man? If she had not defiled her marriage. If she had defiled her marriage, he walks away clean. She walks away defiled with, with, uh, with her balls and her innards all being rotted. But after going through what, what God prescribed by the priest and in the temple, if she was right and clean and pure before her husband, he would have to bring an offering. If a man is not jealous of his wife, there's something wrong with that man. If you can sit there and watch your wife dance with another man, you need to be kicked in the stones. If you allow your wife and another male to kiss or hug, you need to be locked up. God gets jealous over his people. His bride, Israel, is his bride. And he gets jealous over them. Now, you can take jealousy too far, but I'm not talking about jealousy too far. I'm talking about jealousy over a loved one. And so for the wife to the husband. It is such a bounds of a marriage discourse that... Anybody who can interfere with your partner ought to bring a, a feeling into your heart. It's right here. God has established that the husband is above the wife. You don't put the children in front of each other. They come after those, the husband, the wife, the children. You don't put your career in front of the marriage. It goes to husband. It goes to wife. It goes to children. Then it goes the occupation. You break that, you're in trouble. And that's where the trouble of America is. They have broken the ladder that God has established for the family. I work with people and they'll tell, you know, I let my spouse go dance with someone else. I let them go to you're crazy. You're playing with sin. And in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. The heathen have mistreated you. You say anything about my wife and I'm going to get angry. And all it be the same, if somebody says anything about me, she ought to get angry. And you don't sin. Paul told one of the churches there, be angry and sin not. You have the right to be jealous over your spouse, and you have the right to get angry over anybody who goes against your spouse. According to the Bible. God is angry with the heathen for what they're doing to his people, to his bride. When Paul persecuted the church, Jesus said, you persecuted me.
When a husband and wife become husband and wife, they are one. They take one name. The Bible says you are one body. What you do to the wife is done to the husband. What you do to the husband is done to the wife. And God shows it in chapter 36 of his bride called Israel. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, all around you, except for the Mediterranean Sea, they shall bear their shame. Insomuch that he told Abraham, anybody that curses you, I'm going to curse you. And you know, be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. When you plant a seed in the ground, you get much more than that one seed. When you take a, a, one kernel of corn and plant it in the ground, and when it becomes a corn and a stalk, how many kernels do you get off that plant? Many. You plant a tomato seed in the ground. That plant comes up and produces tomatoes. How many seeds are in those tomatoes? Many. The dandelion. You plant a dandelion in the ground. It grows up. It turns white. It has many seeds in the seed you plant. And you just blow up on it and it just goes all over the place. It's no more together. And that's what God will do to the heathen. You're going to be no more together. I'll scatter you. Put you off into hell. But ye old mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches. That's kind of interesting. Does mountains have branches? I know they got ridges and things I don't even, you know, the passes and all that and, you know, steeps and I didn't know they had branches. God said a mountain has branches. I'm going to say branches. I don't know what it is. God does. And yield your fruit to my people of Israel. So evidently the fruit goes to the branches, goes to the tree. For they are at hand to come. Now we read about rivers, we read about valleys, we read about hills. Producing trees, producing fruit. And God says, Israel's going to be gone one day. The whole world's going to rejoice. But guess what, mountains? Guess what, hills? Guess what, valleys? What? What, what, Ezekiel? They're coming back. For behold, I am for you, the mountains. I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. They're going to come back and they're going to make you a garden. They're going to make you orchard. They're going to make you vineyard. They're going to plant upon you mountains. And I will multiply men upon you. All the house of Israel. Even all of it. And the city shall be inhabited. And the waste shall be built. Now look at that. You think God's done with the Jew? Well, that happened during Nehemiah and Ezra. And now God's all finished with them because they've become an enemy of the gospel. We're not done with the chapter yet. There's yet prophecy to yet to come. But Ezekiel speaks to the mountain. He speaks to the hill. Guess what? The Jews will be back. I will multiply upon you men and beasts. And they shall increase and bring fruit. I will settle you after your old estate. And will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Do better than your beginnings? If that was just Ezra and Nehemiah, well, they're not better today. Jews are all over the world. There is no temple. There is no king in the land today. That's not better. Even when Ezra and Nehemiah built the temple, there was no Ark of the Covenant. That went to heaven. And it sure wasn't better when Jesus came. The whole nation was sick. Weren't there blind? Weren't there lepers? Weren't there deaf? Weren't there maimed people? That don't sound better. Better is a word that shows up in the book of Hebrews. 
studied better in Hebrew. Not yet, yeah, excuse me. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you. Even my people Israel, the Jew, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. Well, they were bereaved for a while after 70 AD, only to come back during World War I. So it can't be just during Ezra and Nehemiah. That place right now is filled with Jews and Gentiles. And every time a, a, a missile gets launched at Israel, every time a Jew dies, there's all kinds of people rejoicing. They can't have their full population growth. Not today. Thus saith the Lord God, because they say unto you, The land devours up man, and has bereaved thy nation. Therefore, Thou shalt devour men no more. No more death. Neither bereave thy nations any more, save the Lord God. No, making no one unhappy. No sadness. That's going on today. They're dying now. There is much tears and crying and weeping right now. Guy goes out in the woods, cuts a tree down, and lands on his son. That's crying. Falls down a hill. Dies. Neither will I cause men to cause them. Neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen anymore. Do you recognize what that period of time is going to be? When God judges the goat nations and gets rid of them? That the only heathen that will be in the land of those that helped them and aided them and cared for them. Neither shall thou bear the reproach of the people anymore. They're, those people that reproached them are going to go bye bye. They're going to go off into hell. This ain't Ezra and Nehemiah. Weren't they under the Roman government when Jesus came? They couldn't even rule their own nation without Rome's help. Neither shalt thou cause thy nations to fall any more, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, that's their land, America steals it. This is my land, this is your land. Yeah? Don't pay your taxes to see how long is your land. Wait till God says an enemy in this country see if it's my land. Right now, the Mexicans are trying to take over. They want their land back. The Native Americans claim it's their land. They defile it by their own way and by their doing, sin. Now we're present. They're in the land, but they're sinning. Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Their way was before me as uncleanness of a removed woman. You know what the Bible says about that. Anything that touched her, anything that came around her, was to be made unclean. She's to be in separation. Wherefore I, pure, I poured my fury upon them for the blood they had shed upon the land. Murder. Nebuchadnezzar is that battle axe that he's going to use and has used that they had shed upon the land for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. So there's murder and idolatry going on. Does that match an organization happening today? your Hollywood. Holy wood. And I scattered them among the heathen. And they enjoyed it. And they were dispersed through the country. According to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. Why? Because of murdering and because of idolatry. 
I, God, judged them because of their sin. And when they entered in unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned. Isaiah 52, 5, Romans 2, 24. They profane my holy name. When they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and are gone forth out of his land. Oh, you guys are really, you're really God's people, aren't you? Look what God did to your nation. That Babylonian guy walked up to Jeremiah and said, You know why this happened? This happened because you guys are sinners. Great people of God you are. Where's your temple now? Where's your God now? You know what Christians who make, who live in sin and live in lust and live in the world, they make people like us say, Yeah, I know a guy who, who ran off with a piano player. I know a guy who stole the church thing. I know a Christian and he drinks. I know a person, he celebrates Christmas. Blah, 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 blah. You proclaim the holy name of God by living worldly, by committing sin. You proclaim God's name. You are made an excuse to the heathen on not to get right. But you're still God's people. And he will judge you. And he will correct you. But I had pity for my holy name. Look at that. Very name they destroyed. Which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen. Whether they went. Do you read what Hebrews said? When God was talking to Abraham, there was nothing better but he could swear but by God's name. By God's own name, he swore to Abraham. You know why God can't throw the Jew and get rid of them totally and annihilate them and get rid of them, make the, make the world all happy, get rid of the Jews, the people of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Because God swore by his name to Abraham. That's the only reason why they are who they are today. God made an oath by his holy name. Had profaned among the heathen whether they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel. Now we're going to say to the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God. I do not this for your sake. What? O house of Israel. But for my holy name's sake. Which you have profaned among the heathen. Whether he went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profane among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. The heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before your eyes. We'll keep on reading. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land that is what God is talking about with his holy name. I'm not going to bring you back into your land just because you're Israelites. Even Jesus told him, you know, just because you're of Abraham. So what? Abraham would not have done what you're going to do to me. Kill me. John the Baptist said to him, don't say you're of Abraham. I'm able, God's able to take these stones and raise up the children of Abraham. God will bring them Jews back into that land and settle them once for all by the holy name of God sworn to Abraham the promise, the covenant that he made by saying, I so help me, God. If it wasn't for that oath, you would never have heard of Israel. Israel would be nobody. So if there is no God, explain to me Israel. You know, I know this name is profane among the heathen, but we're reading now. Do you know I have a name of God? I am rightfully called by the Bible from Antioch. I'm called a Christian. I carry the name of Christ. Now there are some Christians out there that defile Christ. 
the holy name of God. Why, let's put Christ back in Christmas. It was never there. Let's put Christ into a pagan ceremony. That ain't, you are profaning. When you, as a Christian, say, say that Christ is supposed to be in Christmas, you are profaning God's name. Jesus is God, right? And God is Jesus, right? And for the, by the name of Christ, Antioch, they were first called Christians there. By the way, you know when they called them Christians there, they were making fun of them? He didn't live in Christ's life. You know, it wasn't to make fun of it was, it was a good, pleasing name. Well, it was a taunt. It was a what? A loss of reputation, a public disgrace. It was a scorn, a laugh to be called a Christian. And by being in Christ, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to New Jerusalem. By the testimony of the gospel that Christ died for my sins, was buried according to scriptures, and rose again the third day according to scriptures, no matter how much I sin, I am in Christ, I am in his name, he's going to bring me home to my land, New Jerusalem. There's no need to worry about losing it. I can't lose his name. I can never lose my, my, my earthly father's name. Even if I change my name, I'm still a uh, Hayward. I can change it all I want. I'm still a Hayward. I will always be a Hayward. And then when you marry somebody, that when that woman takes your name, according to God, again, you are one body. You are one person. You become your husband. Outside of death. Or adultery. You know how honorable God's name is? He holds it down back on a people who have sinned against him. A people that are murdering his people. By people who have taken his holy name and who he is. And rubbed it through the mud. And God says just because of my name. I've got to honor a promise I made to Abraham. Not, listen, my salvation ain't based upon me. I'm a rotten, dead sinner that belongs in hell. And only outside the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work upon the Calvary, the empty tomb, do I have the merit upon Jesus Christ to go to New Jerusalem. And that is only it. A name that's given above all names, Acts 4.12. And they will know, the heathen will know, by the completed work that God does in you, that God will do for the Israelites, that he is who he is. It ain't Pope, it ain't Joseph Smith, it ain't Morai, it ain't Allah, it ain't Buddha, it is God, it is Jesus Christ. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every knee. That's some name. That's some name that when, when you go somewhere and someone slams their finger, do they, see, do they say, Buddha, damn it? Do they cuss Allah? No, I know two names. They, it's a GD and it's a JC. They cuss. Because there's no great other name where you can cuss by, that you can swear by. But the name given to Jehovah and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus said, For I will take you among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your land. Read that. Put it on the United Nations. Mark it on every map and every atlas above Israel. That land is Israel's land. And when you say it's going to be your land, and you say it's your land, you have defiled God. Then will I sprinkle clean water, uh, Joel 2.28, upon you. And you shall be clean from all your filthiness, 
from all your idols will I clean you. That's not today. That is not today. That was not during Jesus' time. So you can't say that this happened during Ezra and Nehemiah and God's all finished with them today. Just watch. A new heart also will I give you. He is not giving them a new heart. They are outright as a corporate people rejected the Messiah. And a new spirit will I put within you. That has not happened yet. And I will take away the stony heart. They still got that stony heart. Out of your flesh. Notice it says heart, not mind. And I will give you a heart of flesh. That God can work, mold. I will put my spirit within you. It's not there among the nations. And cause you to walk in my statutes, the law. And ye shall keep my judgments, the law, and do them, works, salvation. It's not today. The law, the judgments, and the statutes are coming back. Ye shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And ye shall be my people, shall be. And I will be your God. Ain't there, ain't there God today? Outside believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and being saved. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. And I will call for the corn. I didn't get no corn when I got saved. I must have missed out on something. And will increase it. And lay no famine upon you. Wasn't there a famine in, in the book of Acts that one church had to send help to, to Jerusalem? Yeah, it's not today. Not yet. There'll be no famine in the millennium. You're going to plant seeds and you're going to have massive growth. Massive fruits. As we preach to the mountains, to the hills, to the valleys. You're going to be a fruitful I will also save you from all your uncleanness. This uncleanness is. I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree. You think an apple tree gives fruit today? You wait to see how much fruit you're going to get in the millennium. That tree is going to bend over with apples. And the increase of the field, wheat, barley, and what else grows from the weed of the fields over there? That ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. They're going to say, wow, look how fruitful, look how wonderful that nation is producing. Look at all the fruit. And you will not have to run back to Egypt anymore like they did in Joseph's time. Matter of fact, Egypt will be coming to Israel for food. Then shall ye remember your own evil way. And your doings that were not good. And shall loathe yourself. Extreme hatred. In your own sight for your iniquities. And for your abomination. They're going to repent and they're going to get right before God. Not for your sakes do I do this. saith Lord God. Not because of who you are. It's never because of who you are. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed. Confounded for your own ways. O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God. In the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities. They're going to be cleansed as a nation, as a group of people. I will also cause you to dwell in the cities and the waste shall be builded. And the desolate land be tilled, farmed. Whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. Look at that land over there. Dead. Like that part in the Proverbs over there. I walked by and the... the the weeds were overgrown. The walls were torn down. Not during this time. And they shall say this land that was desolate. Would become like the Garden of Eden. That's not today. And the waste and the desolate. And the ruined cities are become fenced. Built up. We're going to have fenced cities pretty soon in the future. Even though America don't like it. The fenced cities are coming back. And are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you, those nations that did right, shall know that I am the Lord. Build the ruined places and plant that was desolate. 
I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. These are the people that help the Jews who get the millennial kingdom with the Jews. They say, wow, all I did was visit you in jail. Look at what you're giving me. All I did was give you chicken soup when you were sick. Look what you reproduced for me. They're going to get a quadruple kapuku to mock you lot much sowing for giving those Jews a little help in the tribulation period. Beyond what they could ever, and they're only going to say, that Lord Jesus Christ that sits on the throne of David, that's the only one that made it possible, because this was not the world that we lived in before Jesus came. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be required by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock. As the, remember we read earlier about a flock that was sick, maimed, no one took care of them. Well, that shepherd in John chapter 10 is going to be there taking care of them. Psalms 23. As the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem, in her solemn feast, the feasts are coming back. It won't be Halloween. It won't be Christmas. It won't be 4th of July. It will be Pentecost. It will be the Passover. It will be the Feast of Weeks. So shall the waste cities be filled with the flocks of men. Like they were in Bethlehem when Mary and Joseph went to go pay their taxes. And there was no room at the inn. You know why there was no room at the inn? Because everybody had to come into the land. And they shall know that I am the Lord in the millennium. And that's the best time to know the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are on his side in the millennium. Getting all the blessings that he'll give to those Jews. And you're getting blessed by those Jews. Because you helped those Jews. And that's the blessing you get for helping those Jews. You bless those Jews and God will bless you. Wonderful. Excellent. 